Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's Chemistry Webcast. In this webcast, we're going to be discussing relationships between the length of a bond and the strength of a bond. Here's what I'd like to discuss in this webcast. First, I want to look at the relationship between bond type or bond order and bond energy. And then I'd like to look at the relationship between bond order or bond type and the length of the bond and do some practice problems as we go. Well, if we're going to talk about bond energy, we really need to define it. I like to call it bond dissociation energy. This is the energy required to break a bond and then form neutral isolated atoms. You have to put energy in to break the bond. And if you put enough energy in, you can break the bonds between the atoms and you end up with individual atoms. Sometimes it's referred to as just bond energy, but I really like the term bond dissociation energy because it reminds me that this is the energy going in to break the bond. It's always an endothermic process. Sometimes we like to talk about a term called bond order for a bond. So if we're looking at a carbon-carbon single bond versus a carbon-carbon double bond versus a carbon-carbon triple bond, the single bond we say would have a bond order of one. A double bond has a bond order of two. A triple bond has a bond order of three. So what we're really discussing is how many pairs of electrons are being shared between those two atoms in the bond. And sometimes it's just a convenient way to compare bonds. Let's look at the relationship between bond order and the bond association energy. If we have a carbon-carbon single bond, it takes about 348 kilojoules to break a mole's worth of those bonds. Carbon-carbon double bond, about 614 kilojoules. For a carbon-carbon triple bond, it's 839 kilojoules. Ah, there's definitely a pattern here. So as we go from single to double to triple bonds, it's very clear that the bond dissociation energy increases. Multiple bonds have higher bond energies than single bonds. Now that's not so surprising. I have one pair of electrons being shared in a single bond versus two pairs of electrons being shared that's going to be a stronger attraction. It's going to take more energy to break it. If I have three pairs of electrons being shared, that's an even stronger attraction, and it's going to take even more energy to break it. So as the bond order increases, the bond dissociation energy increases. And so we can say that double bonds are stronger than single bonds because of this higher bond energy. But a double bond isn't twice as strong as a single bond. If you look at the numbers, it's not a doubling. And a triple bond isn't three times as strong as a single bond. So we do see a higher bond energy reflecting these stronger bonds for multiple bonds. Let's turn our attention to the distance between atoms, bond length. We define bond length as the average distance between two bonded atoms. We can think about it as the distance between the nuclei when they're at their minimum potential energy. Remember, energy is released when a bond is formed. And when the energy is down at a minimum, the distance between the nuclei is as small as you can get and still have the atom stay together. And so that's what we define as the bond length. So the question becomes, how does bond length relate to the bond order? If we have a nitrogen single bond, bond order of one, we've got a bond length of 1.47 angstroms. A double bond, 1.24 angstroms. A triple bond, 1.10 angstroms. Clearly there's a pattern here. The more pairs of electrons we have shared between the atoms means we have a shorter bond length. In other words, as the bond order increases, the bond length decreases. We can actually put all of these parameters together. When we have longer bond lengths, when we have a lower bond order, we also have lower bond dissociation energies. Short bonds are strong bonds. So those short nitrogen-nitrogen triple bonds have the shortest bond length and the highest bond energy of these nitrogen-nitrogen bonds. When we think about connecting this into chemical reactions, what we see is that Higher bond dissociation energies are linked to lower chemical reactivities. Strong bonds are not going to be as reactive. We're going to wrap up with a couple of practice problems. Which bond would you expect to have the shortest bond length? Bond one, bond two, or bond three? Pause a moment and think it through for yourself and then go on with the webcast. Well, we want the shortest bond length and we know that atoms that are sharing more pairs of electrons that have a higher bond order are going to be the shortest bonds. And therefore, we would expect bond three to have the shortest bond length of these three bonds. We know the pattern is that triple bonds are going to be shorter than single bonds or double bonds. In fact, we would expect bond two to be the longest bond. Which of these three bonds would you expect to have the lowest bond association energy? We know that when the bond order is low, the bond association energy is low. And the higher the bond order, the higher the bond energy. Therefore, since bond two is a single bond and the other bonds are multiple bonds, 
I would expect bond two to have the lowest bond association energy because single bonds are weaker than double or triple bonds. It's time for a final wrap up. Short bonds are strong bonds. As more electron pairs are shared between the atoms, the bond length decreases and the bond association energy increases. Subscribe to my channel so you get all my latest videos and study chemistry every day. That's how you get better.